Hello, everybody. We are in town again. We had to go pick up stuff uh, in town while we were doing some running around. And Wanda looked at me and said, Danny, you want to go by the secondhand store? She said, I saw something the other day that you might want. So I said, well, I'm not too much on doing stuff like that, but I did it anyway. Went into the secondhand store and guys, I'm going to show you what I found. This is what was in there. An old fashioned hand ringer from Amish country. The people picked it up there and brought it here. I told her, I said, it's in kind of bad shape. You know, the wood is, but I can rebuild it. I think I'm going to take time and let this be one of my projects on one of the rainy days when I'm in the shop to, uh, to actually come out and see if I can um, rebuild this thing. It looks like it's rebuildable. I had to replace some of the bolts and stuff, but all the, the mechanisms on it looks pretty good. Now the rollers right here, they're a little bit war, but I'm not going to worry about that too much because the handles all still crank on it. It still turns real well. Everything works good. I think it'd be a great thing for us to uh, put over at the cabin. It's got an adjustment here on the top to tighten the tension up or lessen it up. So that's good. Looks like it's made out of maple, what it looks like. A good hard maple. So we're going to take this thing and... We're going to take it to the cabin. I wish I could get a better picture of it sitting here in the truck. But, and it looks like the water pours out right here. Like you might have feed it from the other side and the clothes come out here and the water pours out here. It's got some places on the bottom of it here where there was brackets where you mounted it on the side of something. I'm not really that familiar with this. It just looked like something that would be a nice project for me to, uh, to just rebuild and, and to just have. So... I want to show y'all here on Patreon, one of my latest finds, guys. You're the first to see it. Guys, do you remember this thing? I bought it here a while back. Uh, it's an old ringer that fits on a tub. It's an antique. I told you I was going to rebuild. Well, this is going to turn out to be a massive project because a lot of it was rotten and deteriorated and rusted up bad, so I'm having to rebuild every part of it. So... Um, here is the first part right here. These are the pieces that came off of it. They were really in bad shape. Uh, there's a nut that goes down inside here. Let's see if I can get it and show it to you. It's a, it's a self-holding nut that goes into wood. It's got these ears on it that goes down in the wood. I was able to salvage them and the pieces that came out of it without stripping them or messing them up. These actually fit down inside here. And what I've got to do is I've got to come over here and drill these things here. So what we're going to use to do that is a Forstner bit. We have these Forstner bits here. I'm going to use this to drill that out with in these here. And then I'm going to come back. We're going to lay out this hole and this hole. And then we'll lay out this hole. And once we get these all drilled... Then we'll move then we'll move on to chiseling this part out. And then from that point, we're going to move over to building this piece right here. This is all one piece right here. A lot of notching, uh, a lot of cutting angles, drilling holes, cutting out pieces in here. There's wooden wedges that goes in here. There's all kinds of things that goes in here. So it's going to take some time to do this. So we're going to continue to drill our holes here with the Forstner bit. And we'll show you what this looks like as soon as we get it all drilled out. And I can show you this originally went on this right here like that. It originally went like that. And you had this gap right here. This is the part that actually hooked onto the ringer itself. Now this is cut at a bevel because the tubs are round. And there's a piece that goes in here that's hand tightened, and I'll show you that. I, I like to never got it out of there, but I, I did, and I think I can salvage it and fix it back. But it's going to take a, it's going to take a little work to do it. But let's get these things drilled. Okay, guys, to kind of give you a little bit of an idea here about what we were talking about, this is this is how we drilled it. We drilled a Forstner bit down five eighths of an inch deep, and then we carried a 1964th bit on through. To the other side here so like we said this is made where this nut 
will drive down into that wood and these ears on this nut holds it in the wood from turning. So we're hoping we can do this without splitting this. I may end up having to do some little altering here, but uh, this oak is pretty hard. You can see, now my Forstner bits are sharp, but I'm gonna show you something. Look how it, that oak is so hard. It, it tried to burn the sides on it because I had to cut so slow because this stuff is hard. Now this stuff right here that it's made out of, I believe is maple. I believe it's what they call rock maple. Um, it's, but I'm going back with oak. Uh, we're gonna see if we can make oak work. Now, to drill these other two holes, we've got one here and one here to drill, and we'll have this thing ready to start putting back together. Okay guys, we got the, uh, the nut down in here. Now it took some doings because you see the wood right here? It wanted to try to split on me a little bit. So I ended up having to take a Dremel tool with a, with an end on it like this to cut down in here a little bit where those little spots were. That's what was going on. This nut had a wide spot on the top of it right there. Now as long as we've got this thing where it's buried up in that wood pretty tight, um, it's not going to turn and twist into wood on us. Uh, we, we've got it held in there pretty good. I mean, we had to, even with the Dremel tool, we had to take a hammer and drive it in there. So I don't think it's going to move. But now we've drilled another hole right here. This is for the piece right here that I had to take out of there. It goes in here like this and comes up. And I'm going to show you if I can. This, this piece right here slides through this hole right here turn this thing up and it turns and actually goes through that nut. If I can get this kind of difficult when you're trying to do this by yourself. But you see how that keeps pushing through there? This thing just keeps on turning. I'm turning it down here and it goes through here like this. Now once this is up through here like, let's clean this up here, like this, this piece here actually goes on top of this. Now I had to, I had to take the top of this right here was bratted inside this right here. I had to take a file and file around the top of this thing and put this thing in a vise with a punch and actually drive it out of here. Now this goes back on here like this, and it'll go, and I'll tap it back down on there. I'll have to rebrad it back, and then what happens is, is as you tighten this thing here up this pin here slides in this wood it fits like that right there this is the part that goes against the inside the drum uh, of the washer so or the outside the drum I don't know exactly yet which it's either the inside or the outside I'll have to wait till I get it all put together to see but now comes cutting this beveled part here. There's a beveled section in here, right here. I gotta cut this section out now. And hopefully we can get that done without, now that we've done done all this without messing something up. So pray that we get it done. We're fixing to make sure that's our next cut. We're probably gonna do this with a bandsaw and then chisel it out. So. Um, I'm being, I'm having to do this by myself. I'm not able to hold a camera while I'm doing it. So I'm in the shop cutting these in here. These have to be opposite of each other. Cutting these two pieces in here proved to be my greatest challenge yet on this thing. I've got to go get my, uh, spoon working tools to finish this up with, uh, and kind of get it dressed up a little bit. Um, got to use my gouge and stuff like that because these have to be cut at a cup kind of like this. They can't, they're not just straight. I didn't realize that when I first started. They have to be able to fit the circumference of a tub. So they've got to kind of be dug out. You know, I'm gonna have to take my spoon working tools and dig this out, kind of clean it up a little bit. But I had to take a Dremel tool and, and get this done. Uh, it was, it is a challenge. I'm gonna tell you, it looks kind of ugly right now, but we're gonna get it dressed up and see if we can't figure out um, you know, if we can make it look a little better anyway. So we've got all the holes drilled. That nut went in. We figured out how to do it. So we're going to put this nut in. These are all drilled. 
Um, that's not a hole. That's just a knot hole in the board there. Um, but we're going to get these things sanded and cleaned up and get them gouged and clean them out with the spoon tools and get the other nut in and see if we can't. Well, we've got one more hole to drill right here. And we're going to see if we can't make this thing work like it's supposed to. Okay, this is just a reminder to self how this thing went together. You take a look at it. It's there. This piece right here comes off. This is what it looks like. There's a wooden piece right here, a little shim that goes in that. It sticks up on its side like that. This goes under it. I'm going to pull this back out of the way. This comes out of there. Okay, this bolt couldn't come out, so I'm going to have to just move it around out to the side. This one broke, trying to get it out of there. It's got a wedge that goes back on this side, too. The rollers fit together like this. Um, this is all one piece, looks like. Take a good look at this. This thing comes apart right here. It's so, uh, it's so dirty. Comes apart. Goes in here just like this. The roller part goes toward this right here. The other part goes down in there like that. Okay, so we gotta get that out of there. See if we can't. We're gonna see if we can't. This whole thing should just pick up out of here. Side like that. Here's the other part of that. Now, this is what we're left with. Well, guys, this thing right here has been a year in the making. Uh, this is one of those projects. Uh, one that I bought this uh, back about a year ago at a little thrift place here in town. I saw it in the store and I picked it up. It was in bad shape, but I knew that I knew what it was. I knew it went on a, a washer wringer and it you know it fed on the tub and this thing was made to go in. And I questioned the people about it and they told me that it was actually an antique uh, that they had found. And and I had to pay a little more for it than what I wanted, but um, but I wanted it. And it was a project for me because I love rebuilding old stuff. So I brought it home and dismantled it and took pictures of everything when I did. It's a good thing I did because it took a year to do it um, because I just don't have a lot of time. And during this uh, freeze that we had, I had the opportunity to come out here in the shop and I had some time because I couldn't do anything outside hardly. And I want to show you some of the pieces. This is why I had to rebuild it. This is, this is what parts of it looked like. It was all broke up. Parts of it was rotted, stuff like that. The ends were rotted off of stuff over the period of years. It probably sat in a barn somewhere. But there were some pieces of it that was in good enough shape that I could actually get the measurements off of and stuff to this nature. And I wasn't able to video everything because it took a course of a year to do this. And I would come out here when I had a few minutes here and there and I would make a piece or make a part. And guys, I kept, I kept some of the old original pieces like this and on the top right here, this piece on the top. Now, it looked like the whole thing was originally made out of some type of rock maple, rock hard maple or something. Uh, a lot of the old parts like this were all rusted up, so I took time and took a, uh, a die and I re-threaded everything, made sure all the threads were in good shape. And I rebuilt it out of oak this time instead of the maple. Now, I kept... I could have rebuilt these parts here like this and this, but I left them in maple because they was in pretty good shape still. They weren't that bad. I wanted to have some of the authentic parts left. Uh, one of my greatest challenges in building this was these pieces right here. These pieces are designed so that when you tighten this down like this, it squeezes these things against the sides of the tub 
to hold this thing stable so that when you run your clothes through it to wring them and squeeze the water out of them, uh, you know, it, it hold it in place. But these things were bratted on top in here, and I had to really work with that to get those brads loose and then go back and re-brad them and not damage this uh, pewter that this is made out of. I, uh, I custom built every part of it uh, with the table saws and planers and stuff. I mean, I built literally all the oak pieces. I went back with all galvanized bolts in it because all the bolts that was in it was just plain steel and they had rusted all up. Most of them broke when I took them out. The uh, screws I went back with and everything was stainless. I went back with stainless steel screws. Uh, and all this is all stainless and everything. And I put when I put it back together, I went ahead and used um, linseed oil on all of it so that should it ever get, I probably will never use it. I want it to go at the cabin um, as a novelty item. But, um, but it is in working order. I'll show you. I mean, it works fine. Works just like a brand new one. Um, I went in and some of the parts were war. I went in and um, rebuilt a lot of the wood bearings that was in it and stuff to that nature. Mm -hmm. um, even something as simple as an old hand crank like this had a hole in it right there so you could oil the shaft that was below it. Now, what I've done is I went back and used white lithium grease on all the little parts in this because it doesn't come off and it stays on there. And the old handle here, I left it. It was busted on both sides in two halves, almost completely off. So I filled it with some really super hard wood glue on both parts. And I took a clamp and put on it and clamped it back together to kind of keep some of the authentic look on it. I mean, I could have put a new handle on it, but I decided not to. I decided to just stay with this. And if it breaks, I'll go ahead and put a new one on it. But this is, guys, it works so easy. And technically, if a person had to use it, it could be used because it does work. And uh, Wanda and I are going to be taking this to the off-grid cabin to go over there because, hey, you never know in the future what you might have to uh, endure. Um, our next purchase that we're looking for now will probably be the old ringer washer tub. Those things are very hard to find. It's not all rusted out because they have an enamel coating on them and usually they get chipped up and stuff like that. But my eyes are open. I'm looking for one. And um, if I find one, then we're gonna mount this baby on it. And uh, we're gonna let that stay at the cabin over there as part of the off-grid lifestyle. So thank you guys from Deep South Homestead. <laughs>